Hey, it's Nick, and today I want to demonstrate a client server application for you. This is probably going to be a two or three part video because I just cannot get it all, all the information in in less than 15 minutes. So you'll have to bear with me a little bit if you're, if you're interested in seeing how to create a client server application that will send XML data back and forth between the client and server and I'm going to go through all of the main classes that make up the project and go into detail uh, regarding the methods that I'm using to get this functionality done. Now it may seem like it should be pretty easy to send a little bit of information back and forth between a client and server but there's actually a lot of work that goes into doing it right. So that's what I'm going to be demonstrating for you today. And I'm going to give you a high level overview of this application first before I run it. You can see the first two classes we have here are TCP client and TCP server. And the objective of this application is to be able is for the client to be able to be prompted for some login information, send it to the server, and have the server validate whether that login information is valid or not. The server needs to send a response back to the client, which the client needs to listen for and read. And then on the client side, we'll have some output regarding whether the information he sent to the server was valid or not. So that's the high level overview. What's going on under the hood to make all that happen is we need to first set up a client and server and we use, we do that with the uh, using the socket class in, J in Java. We're going to set up the server to listen on port 1001 and we also need to set up um, a couple other objects. We're setting up a server socket and then uh, the socket is going to represent the client. So that stuff will be set up when the, uh, when the server is turned on, which basically just says, hey, I'm here, I'm listening on port. 1001 for something and then the client when he's initialized he's gonna set up um, input and output streams to the server and that's what the the once the server has accepted the client those object input and output streams are how the two will communicate with each other and this is a multi-threaded application so for each instance of TCP client we're gonna have its own dedicated input and output stream to the server so we'll have one server and we can have many clients connecting simultaneously to the server and I think um, probably the best thing to do is just go ahead and launch it and show you what it's doing real quick and then I'll get into more specifics about how it's doing what it's doing. So we'll first start the server. It's listening on port 1001 and we'll start the client. And let's start another client just for fun. So we got two clients in the server. The server's here. He sees that two clients have connected. If we started another client, it'll say alright I got you can see we got I'm listening for three different clients now let's go to one of the clients and try to log in now what's happening here is the the server is going to take in this information this pin and account ID that the client is putting in and it's going to validate that against a MySQL table and that is right here 
and you can see one and one and two and two are the login information the only two records that would uh, give you a valid response from the server if you put anything other than that this login valid would come back as false so you can see session ID 2 there let's hop over to a different client and let's put in some false information and make sure that we got a false response from the server that time go to another client let's put in 2 2 and it says yep that's valid and you can see the session ID is incremented so every every interaction between the client and server for each client is going to be unique amongst all the clients and obviously that would be important um, to have to have a unique uh, unique number that corresponds to each transaction um, between a client and server so how is it doing that let's start looking at the uh, implementation of this and what I'm going to talk about first before I actually go into the code and start looking at um, the different methods that do this is give another overview of what's going on here and why this is sort of interesting. The TCP client is going to create a login request object from the information that the user enters on the console. It's going to need to turn that login requests object into an XML object. We need to do that because we want to send XML over the network. That's a protocol or a, um, a kind of document that's easy to send back and forth over the network and there's the document class in Java that we'll be using to create our object our XML object that represents a login request so we get that login request on the client side creates it from the user's input turns it into a document object and then it sends it to the server the server has um, that connection set up with the client they are speaking with the object input and output streams and when that server receives a document on that channel it is gonna parse out that information from the XML document and turn it into a login request on the server side once it has a login request on the server side then it can parse out all of that information that the client sent it because really the server is only interested in that login information the name and password so it creates that login request just to be able to call the login requests getters and setters uh, I'm sorry just the getters and it gets the uh, name and password and it uses that information in a query to the database to see if the information that I got from that client is valid or not. If it doesn't find that information in the the database table, it's going to say it's going to return a response back to the client that says that is not valid. And the server does that by creating a login response object that has um, a field for a boolean value of whether that client request was valid or not and that session ID number so it needs to turn that then into a document uh, an XML document send it over to the server or send it over to the client or the client is listening on that object input stream for its response from the server the client takes that document that XML document turns it into a login re uh, login response on the client side and from there the client is able to easily parse the information out of the login response it'll call 
the getters on the login response to get that session ID and to find out whether its login was valid or not. So that's the whole round trip and in the next part of this video series I'm going to go into the code that makes all this possible.